Hello and welcome to the Drag Reduction Sisters podcast. Today we are joined by me, Fiona, Arshi and Danny, and we are going to be reviewing the Australian Grand Prix. Can anyone Ooh. give us an Australian accent? No. All right, mate. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dan and Dan. No, not even that trying, was London. Mate. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, that was me doing London, doing Australia. Oh, God. Are you going to try and offend me here with your accent. London accent? Yeah, that was the plan. As a Londoner, I am offended. <laughs> Have you recovered um, from the sleepless nights or early mornings of watching a race no. from Australia? No, no, I have jet lag. Yeah, jet me lag. too. <laughs> I have jet lag from room. my own bedroom. Yeah, I know. I might as well have gone to Australia. Like, I feel like if I'd gone to Australia, I would have had a better sleeping pattern than I currently have. Yeah, it feels like it was already a week ago. And I'm just like, what happened again? And... I've lost track of time because I was I was waking up at 4 a.m. for free practice, watching free practice, going back to bed, waking up at 7 a.m., <laughs> like, watching it again, then going back to bed. And then I've just spent the last three days of my life sleeping and then waking up in ungodly hours. Yeah, when I watched Quali, I fell asleep in Q3. And then I woke up at the end when it was over and I was like, oh, no. But it felt like I had dreamt it. I was like, did it actually happen? I, I don't know. So I had to like check all the results. And I was like, oh, I was conscious for that part. OK. Can I just say, I was talking to, I was talking to Maisie yesterday and she won't mind me saying this. She woke up for the race. She watched the formation lap, the first lap, and then fell back asleep and then woke up for the last lap. Oh, my God. How did she tell that? <laughs> Like being away for the formation lap, the least important piece of the entire day. Oh, I thought it was so funny. I'm sure as a Ferrari fan, she was still quite happy. Yeah, true. Well, well she saw the car. She saw the car last thing, and I was like, "Oh, I'm out of here." So then, then fell asleep. She couldn't be bothered anymore. She had no more will to live at that point. Okay, will we review the race in our Drag Reduction Sisters format where D stands for drama, R stands for results, and S is something, beginning with S. So we'll kick it off with the drama. There was a lot of drama, even the free practices before the quali. What were your takeaways? As one of the two Canadian ambassadors to the DRS team, I would like to apologize. I would sincerely like to apologize for the atrocities. I am so sorry about <laughs> what happened this week <laughs> with the two Canadian boys. I truly don't know. I've reached out to Justin Trudeau for a formal uh, <laughs> apology. The boys were not behaving. They will be stripped of their maple syrup luxuries for the next year. I was... Their daddies are billionaires, so they'll just buy more. It's fine. <laughs> I was a big fan of this rich Canadian on rich Canadian violence. It felt like a like... fair fight. <laughs> I will say I'm I'm gonna ask the question. Whose fault yeah. do we think it whose fault do we think it was? Lance. Lance a thousand percent. <laughs> Initially I was like, what the hell is Latifi doing? Because I was like, he pulled in, let Lance go, and then just tried to overtake him again. So I was like, Latifi hundred percent. I don't know what he's doing. But then I watched it back and I was like, oh, okay. Lance doesn't know what mirrors are. So yeah. Okay, I'm the same. I was team Stroll when I first watched it because I think the commentators said it as well. They, I was under the impression that he was moving to the right and he was looking in his left mirror to keep an eye on Joe who was coming up. Yeah. Um, and so he didn't see Latifi and I thought Latifi made a bit of a reckless move to overtake, especially because neither of them were on push laps. So I was like, why is he sort of overtaking on the inside of a, a turn? So I was a, originally team Latifi, but then I heard... Lance Stroll's interview where where he basically was just like no I didn't check the mirrors I don't I don't know what I don't know what I don't know what happened and then I was just like well then there's absolutely why did you swerve into the racing line then like if, if there was absolutely no reason why did you do it so now I'm I do think that what Latifi did was kind of unnecessary I don't know why he tried to overtake when neither of them were on a push lap but like whatever it was it was Stroll's fault yeah it was Lance yeah. kind of uh, Lance was on a bit of a weird he was in a weird mood this weekend firstly he uh, smashed into the TV then he smashed into a wall and then he almost took out Danny Rick which I never would have forgiven him for he would have he been chased almost, in Australia he almost also took out Bottas in the race oh yeah do you remember that like Bottas, yeah. Bottas, Bottas was he pushed him off the track didn't he yeah and then thank god he got a five second um, time penalty for that because that was well technically he got the time penalty for swerving on the straights 
Yeah. Yeah. So he that's true. Should, he should have technically got two time penalties, but he was just in a weird mood this weekend. Lance Stroll, what's going on, buddy? You okay? Yeah. Aston Martin in general just had an absolute stinker. Oh my god! Yeah, I think we need to we need to take a moment of silence for Aston Martin, the only current team without points. And you know what's actually funny, right? The 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 drivers that don't have any points are either German or Canadian. So it's Latifi (laughs) and Stroll and Mick and Seb and Nico Hulkenberg. Oh, (laughs) that's heartbreaking. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like it. I'm so upset about Seb. I mean, everyone knows by now. Seb is my favorite driver. And I just, I don't want to, because I know a lot of people are like, is it his fault? Is it the car's fault? I think think part of it is the fact, yeah, part of it is the fact he hasn't had any you know, he hasn't any racing in the car and everyone else has because of the dreaded corona. But that car is awful. It's not a coincidence that in one practice session, both cars binned it in the wall. Yeah, it was such a disaster because there was like, I don't know, was it Crofty or whoever was saying like, oh, you know, the mechanics on the other side of the garage will now help out and, you know, try and get Seb's car ready for qualifying. And then Lance just bins it in the wall and they're like, okay, cancel that. What a nightmare. And bear in mind, this was at this point they'd already had an engine failure. Like Seb's car was on fire during free practice one, I think. Yeah. So he couldn't get out of free practice two. two. And then FP three binned it in a wall, and then Lance binned it in a wall. Yeah. (laughs) And then then Lance crashed in quali. It was the panic of yeah, getting the cars ready for quali. Lance goes out, does about a hundred meters, and then bang. (laughs) (laughs) But it got Seb out on track to do one lap. So, you Which know. is pointless oh. because it wasn't even a good lap. No offense, he, Seb. He needs every lap he can get. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. I don't want to. This is just bringing my mood down. This was such a sad weekend for Aston Martin. I think every weekend so far has been a sad weekend for Aston oh, Martin. Oh, Danny! <laughs> this was the, this was definitely the worst. Oh God. Uh, yeah, it can only go up. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, unless they're trying to dig a hole to the core of the earth, I don't think there's any more bottom than this. <laughs> oh, God. Like, oh. the weekend was just so expensive. Imagine shipping all of that stuff to Australia and yeah, then just smashing soul. up all of the equipment, Daddy's rebuilding soul. it, smashing it up again. Has billions of dollars. It's I think Lawrence shot the cost, the cost cap. They can't keep, uh, they can't oh, keep shit. money on it. It'll come I out mean, of the well, development budget and they really need to develop that care but i think after mine weren't the only team having problems there was what was that there was alonso had issues red yeah. bull had issues in the race McLaren there was the whole thing also had issues with lando's car so I said, alonso had issues which hydraulics issues he couldn't change his gears crash into a wall red bull had issues in the race mclaren had issues in the race Williams had issues with Alex Albon, which led to his disqualification because he had a, was it a fuel oh, leak or something? I think, well, I think no, he, he didn't have enough fuel, enough fuel for the sample, like how Seb got But I think something, ha- but didn't something happen that caused that? Because at the end of Collie, he had to pull to the side of the road. I, road, I just it's not road, is it? I thought he just ran out of fuel. <laughs> yeah, I thought he ran out of fuel too. <laughs> maybe yeah. that just, yeah, maybe just run out of fuel. I'm just getting confused. Maybe, but uh, yeah. I mean, I Lewis's car as well, like when he kind of came on the radio and was saying, you put me in a really tough position. Apparently it was because his car was overheating or something. So he had to Even like, George actually, manage. George got, didn't George get the radio that, oh, don't care about position, just manage right now. So I think even they were worried with yeah. George, like making it to the end of the race. So Tires, a lot of the Mercedes-powered cars are having issues, which was the general theme for Bahrain and Saudi as well. And mm-hmm. I don't know what they're doing behind the scenes to fix that. And none of the reporters have asked this particular question either. And so we're not getting any answers, but we just want to know, like, what's the deal? Because there's this pattern and it's, it's concerning because we thought a lot of these teams were on an upward trajectory. But right now it's a mixed bag of, of results. Well, to be fair, the only team that's not really having any problems, except they are, and I'll move on to that in a second, is Ferrari. Because Red Bull is different. Ferrari Ferrari is different. I'm not even like touching on that right now. No. Well, there is there is one thing. The porpoising this week. Oh my was god. It was insane. insane. I felt was... motion sick just watching it. Yeah. Yeah, they were clearly oh. running a low downforce. But, but there was uh, well, low, high down 
they were clearly running it low to the ground is what I'm trying to say um, <laughs> and it was causing a lot of porpoising and, and some of the clips of Carlos I think in qualifying oh my god it made me feel ill yeah I was looking at Lewis's on board and holy crap his head was moving like a bobble head it was so bad I don't I don't know how they do this I, I hope the seats are more secure or like belts or something or headrests because that's pretty that's- bad I'm doing that for two hours. I cannot imagine that's comfortable. And I just wonder, like, when are they going to, like, actually iron that out and it won't be an issue anymore this season? Or is it just going to continue? I think Mm -hmm. that they're trying to, they're trying to balance performance with porpoising in that if they, you know, move the car up so it's not as close to the floor, the porpoising goes, but they're not as fast. So they're sort of, I think they're just sort of saying deal with it. Yeah, they're like, which is the lesser of two evils kind of thing. Yeah, which is not great for the drivers, but I mean, I suppose they'd rather be going fast. <laughs> but yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. Red Bulls kind of. are kind of, <laughs> they're not looking so great with their reliability either. Like when you think of it no. from like Red Bull powertrain operated cars, Max DNF'd Sorry. twice, Perez DNF'd, Pierre went on fire and Yuki didn't start. Yes. Can I just point out as well, one of my favourite radio messages from the weekend was when Max broke. Mm-hmm. Well, his car broke. He didn't break, like mentally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when Max, he said that he just started crying in the cockpit. Was, I can't do this anymore. I um, quit. <laughs> when Max's car broke, uh, and then and then Perez came on the radio, being like, "Oh, what happened to Max? Can I, what happened to Max?" And they basically was like, "Not your car, not your problem. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> Keep going." <laughs> Wait, what was the radio? I missed that. What was the exact radio? I can't remember I mean, what was it was, like, but it was literally... Yeah, he was like, oh, is everything okay with Max? Like, you know, his reliability or whatever, his car. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Checo's engineer was like, Max has nothing to do with our race. You know, head down, kind of thing. And he's kind of like, oh, okay. Okay, sassy pants at Red Bull. Mm. It was very much like, it's not your car, just keep driving. Like, it just yeah. didn't say anything. That was the opposite of what happened with McLaren, though, because I don't know if you guys heard the radio. I was yeah. watching Danny's on board. And Lando in front of him started losing power or, or some sort of reliability issue with his car. And so Tom, Danny's engineer, was telling Danny that don't put pressure on Lando. He's having some sort of car issues. Mm-hmm. So just don't put pressure on him. And I think the first time that Danny got told that, Danny understood that, okay, basically hold position. But then Tom came on and he was saying this in a joking manner. Like the second radio, which is he was just laughing a little bit. He's like, basically, like if Lando's power goes out and his car stops, just don't hit him. But then after that, he came back on and said, you know, just don't put pressure on him again. So I think that was a like a diplomatic way of saying hold position, which yeah, I do don't know how <laughs> I don't know how people are going to react to that. I don't know how the team is going to react to that just because like, OK, if Lando's losing power, then why shouldn't Danny overtake him if he has the chance. Yeah, what, like, usually what's... they'd be like, oh, the faster car should kind of take priority kind of thing. Yeah, and um, I don't know what Danny would have protected Lando from because who was behind Danny anyway? Was it... I think it was Ocon. Ocon. Or... Yeah. It was Ocon because it was Alex Albon, but then he pitted, so it was Ocon. Mm. Okay, but then... He, like, he was if... far behind. Yeah, he was much... He yeah, was it was like eight behind. seconds or something, nine seconds. And there were he only was not a couple a of laps left. Like, maybe there were three or two laps left when this problem was It was literally the, lo- it was the last lap. I oh, think. they were the last lap. So, I don't know. It kind of felt reminiscent of Zandvoort, where, I don't know, this this really conflicted me. Because I understand that, okay, you're trying to secure both cars in the points. But if you're in the last lap, one car is running out of power, why would you be like this? That's just my two cents, which is not really two cents because I myself am very conflicted about this. But what are what are you guys' thoughts on that? I I don't know the full story. From what I could understand, they were saying he's managing something on his car. So I don't know whether he actually ended up losing power. Maybe he didn't lose power and he didn't actually slow down. But I do agree if he was slowing down and was losing power and Danny Rick was the faster car, I would have thought it would have been fair to just say, okay, Danny overtake yeah like i think he was saying like oh i'm just telling you this in case you know he stops on the track and then danny was like if he stops on the track what do what do you, what what do you do want I... me to do yeah and were, he was like oh overtake him i just don't want you to crash into the back of him oh overtake yes. him if he stops on track but otherwise <laughs> otherwise don't overtake him which... yeah kind of oh. weird well lando is their first driver there's no denying that i don't think that i don't think that's a controversial opinion lando is the first driver in mclaren and he already is ahead of Danny Ricks in the, in the points mm-hmm. before the race. So yeah. I can understand why they would prioritise him. 
he also qualified earlier and he was ahead the entire race, which I mean, I, I understand that too. So that was, that was his position to keep. I get that. I think they were just like, look, it's safe for you to be going a bit slower. If he goes, if he stops or he goes too slow, then overtake him. But mm-hmm. for now, just keep position. I think that makes sense. They want Lalo yeah, to get the most points. Enough, I guess. That's true. Yeah, that makes sense now. It was actually, now that I think about it, it's kind of like Monza because Lando held on to that position the entire race and he qualified higher as well. So that place was his. It, it had his name on it. So, I, okay, actually, you know what? Fair play. Carlos. Oh, Carlos. Carlos. Oh, bless you Carlos. How... I, well, I know he had a kind of a, a shit quality, but even at the start of the race, his steering wheel had to be replaced like last second because it wasn't working or something. What? I did not know this. Yeah. Before. Tell us and more. Then, and then I think, uh, oh, that's all I know. Um, I think uh, <laughs> they were, he was, yeah, you could see them like switching out the steering wheel. And this is when they're like on the on the grid. I don't know if they had like set up all the functionality or something correctly. So I think he was a bit kind of thrown by that, which isn't great. But like, yeah, his quality wasn't fantastic either, which was definitely not helping his weekend it was a mixture of a few things like there was the problem with the red flag which i think was caused by alonso and his hydraulics issue and that meant that carlos had to abort a fast lap but then i think he said he just was not it was just not a good quality session like he just was not going as fast as he wanted to he was not getting the laps in that he should have been getting in so yeah i it, it just seemed like a difficult weekend for him and i still quite I haven't quite worked out what happened in the race that that caused him to to do that. Yeah, like he had a really it, really slow start. Like everyone was passing him out. I don't know what happened, but I don't know was it just he just couldn't get the tires to fire up or something that he just kind of lost the was, car. He just but that's the thing. It just totally went on him, and mm. he just beached himself. I think Seb did something similar before he DNF uh, at that same corner, yeah, but managed to get himself out of the gravel. That corner so, was a point for a lot of the drivers because even Kevin went off a little bit over there, no? Yeah, I think Mick did anyway. Yeah. Oof. I was say, it was lucky. It was lucky when Carlos went off like that that he didn't smash into I think it was Mick. It was a hat. Yeah. yeah. He was flying across the track. I was like, how did they avoid him? It was Mick so got, close. It yeah, was Mick's so got, close to yeah. yeah. And then Mick nearly went into the back of Yuki. Oh, that was oh, scary. Oh my god, that was so scary. Yes, yeah, so there's a few um, scary moments in that race. I honestly, yeah, that that turn caught a lot of the drivers off, like off guard. The the thing with Carlos, like you said, he had a slow start, and up until the spin, like the entire race, he just wasn't like other cars were passing him, and you could see he was trying to get up to speed with them. But there was something off, and they better figure out this this setup because you've got a car that's winning the race, yeah, and then you've got another car that's and he's really frustrated. Like every time he comes out of a quali or he can't hide his emotions, whatever. can he? No, like he no. even said, I think it was after the quali, he was like, I'm really, really angry. And then I think the interviewer was like, oh, what are you going to do to kind of overcome that? And he was like, oh, I'm going to be angry until I go to sleep. And then I will wake up and I will go again. And then he had that race, which was awful. So oh, yeah. yeah, it must be frustrating because he knows he has a good car. And yeah, the like the more of a lead that, you know, Charles builds up. I definitely think Ferrari would be like, okay, that's our number one driver. And not just like number one, number two, there's also Mick looming in the background. You know that, right? Because Mick is, he's signed. Yeah, with I still Ferrari. I still think they're they're happy with Carlos no, no, for now. I know, still. I, yeah. I know they're happy with Carlos, but I'm just saying like Carlos knows in the back of his head, kind of like mm-hmm. Danny Rick knows in the back of his head with like Pato, or Pato, sorry. And like just with Lando's performance. Similarly, Carlos probably feels that way seeing Charles excelling yeah. and winning two races. And Carlos just struggling a little bit. So he, I'm just saying, like these are all the external factors true, true, that true, could true. probably play. On I your guess mind. You, play on your mind, and you could just be in your own head a little bit too much. So I really hope he gets mm-hmm. a bit of a break this week and comes back strong. Yeah, I mean, your biggest rival is your teammate at the end of the day. Yeah. And I mean, we'll talk about this in the results because I, I have some feelings about Mercedes that I want to discuss in terms of teammate. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but yeah, I think. To be out-qualified by your teammate, to be beaten so significantly by your teammate, it just doesn't look yeah. good. And not no. just beaten, but also have a shunt. Like, okay, not a shunt, but also have an incident. How would you call it? What, what happened with Carlos? Because he didn't really... Nothing, just an incident on the race. <laughs> okay. The race. So, <laughs> it wasn't a smooth operation. There we go. Thank <laughs> you, V. <Fee. laughs> 
his very unsmooth operation on track in combination with Quali, in combination with Charles winning the race. Yeah. Knowing that Charles is the number one driver, knowing that there are so many other drivers vying for his seat, he's going to have to really have a clear head. Otherwise, this anger and frustration is just going to... Boil over. Like, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it's a lot of pressure because yeah. Fer- Ferrari are going for the constructors this year and they're going to put a lot of pressure on Carlos to be delivering those points. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't want him to become like Valtteri for Mercedes because that really hurt. And I love Valtteri. I just hated the way he was treated all like a lot of the time at Mercedes. Yeah. And, I, and I, I really don't want a repeat of those behaviors with any other driver. Not even on my worst driver or my least favorite driver would I hope that sort of treatment. It, mm. it's, it's really heartbreaking. I feel like we need to discuss the most important piece of drama from this I weekend. I know what you were getting at. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is underwear talk. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So the first bit of news that came out was regarding piercings, but this mm-hmm. is one whole rule about uh, clothing and piercings and what is allowed Wait, was during it just a race. General general jewelry, or was it just piercings? I thought it was also. It was sorry, it, it was jewelry. It was jewelry and body piercings. So that was chains. And to be honest, the only person we know that has a piercing is Lewis. So that would be Direct the nose him. piercing. Mm. He's also got, no, he's got regular piercings in his ears as well. Yeah. Lots of them. Yeah. But no other driver, because I think they were saying that the drivers that wear chains don't wear them when they're racing, which makes sense. But it is just Lewis that has a piercing. Does Sorry. it make wear a chain when he's racing though? Because I Apparently thought he... he doesn't wear it in the race, they were saying. Oh. No, he takes it off. Oh, okay. That's good. I was originally a bit confused about this rule and why they've decided to make it an issue now. And I still stand by that. I understand the rule. I think that it makes complete sense. And it's a safety measure and you don't really want bits of metal flying about when you're in a crash. Um, but I just think it's odd that it's come out now. Mm. I don't know. I just think it might be the new race directors are kind of like picking up on things that have been kind of been let slide over the years and they're like no we're gonna bring this back and enforce it properly but i wonder what was the reason that they kind of decided oh actually let's sort this out i don't really know yeah but then the other part of this new it's not a new regulation this newly enforced regulation Mm -hmm. is underwear (gasps) fireproof underwear fireproof underwear which apparently not many drivers (laughs) actually wear ew wait where did you hear that from this this is what the whole no not that they don't wear underwear no. <laughs> that they don't wear fireproof underwear okay okay yeah. okay, okay that okay I thought you meant they just don't wear any oh god I was like, whoa <laughs> hold on so much chafing Oof. I reckon that, that at least one driver on the grid drives commando and, and I'm not that's... saying it's Danny Rick that, but was... it's Danny Rick <laughs> yeah it's definitely Danny Rick. <laughs> You know, I, I guess it, it lightens the load at the end of the day. It's just, if you want to be lighter, it's less yeah. clothing, isn't it? Exactly. It's a, it's a weight-saving sport. you got to be smart about it. 50 grams So, mes- so keep matter. your piercings in and ditch your underwear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a thing, yeah. But apparently, like, some of the drivers didn't even know that fireproof underwear were even a thing that their kit producers made. They were like, what? So, I don't know. Another weird I will one. say I'm a... I'm a little confused about it because if they're wearing fireproofs and then the suit on top of that, if there was a fire, surely the fire would have to go through the fireproofs to get to the fireproof underwear. And then if they're getting through the fireproofs, then they're not fireproof. I think this is just they're trying to like layer up the protection as much as they could. Yeah. But the only thing that that kind of boggles my mind is, okay, if there is such a thing as fireproof underwear, tell me, do they give it to each team to then give it to each driver? Is it something that the FIA produces or manufactures? Is it, or is this something that they regulate? Where do they think that the teams are going to find this from if they don't give them the proper guidelines and the proper like sourcing information? Like That's what kind of annoys me. And I, I guess that's why Pierre was mad as well. He's like, well, you're just telling us what to do, but you're not really telling us what to do. Like, wh- where do well, you want us to get this thing from? That's the thing, isn't it? How are they going to enforce this? Are they going to have someone check their underwear? I you know, which le- <laughs> I'm kidding. But yeah, you know, who's, who's going to inspect their underwear? It, it makes total sense, you know, why Pierre's coming out and saying these things. Like, 
you know, what are you going to do? Like, Pierre really came out and said, Beep. Pierre, yeah. you want to look oh at my, my dog? Go right ahead. Okay, hang on. No filter. No filter. Can I do... Can I do a dramatic reading of that? We can Please. bleep out any any swears. <laughs> but I feel like we last. need... Okay, so this is, and I quote, exactly what Pierre Gasly said. Read it in a French <clears> accent. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot do a French accent. Do I it. Can do it in my, I can do it in my most theatrical sort of Shakespearean. accent. Yeah, I'll do it Shakespearean. <clears throat> Very Bridgerton. Thyself won't comment on that. If thy want to check my buttocks, feel free. I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> that, thou has got nothing to hide. My feet, everything. If that makes thou happy, feel free. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Wow. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I think you get the idea. <laughs> Demonetized, even though we don't make money. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should move on to results now. Yes, please. I think you should you should head the McLaren discussion. Well, it's personally as a McLaren fan, the most important part of the results was that the it, team got can, can we get paid every time you say as a McLaren fan? Because I <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You do a little count of how many times how many <laughs> yeah. times does Danny claim her allegiance for McLaren? Yeah. Okay. Continue. Well, I was I was losing hope of being a McLaren fan. I was about to become a Haas fan instead. But this weekend has, has saved that for me. You um, were the most pessimistic McLaren fan over the last two weeks. Like, you you're, were you're bringing the same the level whole, as Lando. Yeah, you <laughs> were bringing the whole group down. I was like, oh my God, Danny. Even, it was funny because even during all of the practices, they were doing really quite well. I think, in, was it FP2 or was it FP3? Well, one of them, Lando, was P1. FP3. And even, I think it was yeah. when the two crashes happened and they were like, okay, stop. And he's like, yay. <laughs> yeah, Lando was P1 in FP3. And even then, while I was blinking away to sleep in my eyes, I was still I was still saying, no, no, it's it, it it's not going to... doesn't mean anything. The, the McLarens are bad. There's no way they're going to do well. Like, even up to like Q3 and qualifying, there was this denial in me. I was like, no, there's no way. There's no way they can be doing okay. And then Lando got P4, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then in the race, they got P5 and P6, which I am so happy about because they did such a good race. I did think they were going to get past the Mercedes, but it just didn't happen, which is a shame. But I think, you know, at, at the end of the day, they were the best of the rest. Solid weekend. Good to see. They went from being one of the worst teams to one of the best teams. I will say, unfortunately, that was... You know, because some other teams didn't do so well, like Haas. We pretend we do not see. Shh. We'll take the we'll take the good vibes. Ignorance and the good is news. Bliss. Yes. There was um tattoo that across my forehead. <laughs> As I a was McLaren really surprised. fan, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> <laughs> As a McLaren fan, ignorance is bliss. Um, As a McLaren fan, just to be clear. See, I feel like McLaren you should fan. say it right now. <laughs> You're the As only a McLaren one. fan. <laughs> I drank um, the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> but I, oh I almost, I almost became a Haas fan. I am a bit of a Haas fan because oh, I love I Kane. Like, I love me for sure. Yeah, uh, well, his boat, his boat, his little boat. Um, ship <laughs> bigger than a boat. <laughs> well, I'm talking about his little boat in the uh, in yeah, the catalog. But it's called a Steiner ship now. You know, like there's the Ferrari hype train. There's the Steiner ship. Sounds like a dictatorship. <laughs> oh, no. Steinership. No. <laughs> um, no, I'm I'm fully on board the Steinership boat, speedboat, whatever we're calling it. But they didn't do too well this week. Yeah. Um, which is a shame. But you know, I'm still some happy win, for them. Some lose, I guess. My driver of the day though was Alex Albon. Alex, yep. Yeah. He is wow. absolute wow. legend. He's the Thai Minister of Defense. If Checo's the the Mexican one, he's definitely the Thai Mex the Thai Mexican. God. <laughs> he's the tire manager. Oh, see. <laughs> yeah, I actually came up with that right now. I'm really impressed with myself. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's Thank a you. great one. Thank you, Tyre Williams. Great. If you're hearing this, and if you copy that, you better give 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put that on a t-shirt. I'm getting a cut of that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did I don't he do like, that. I, I, I like it's crazy how he went from literally it. the back of the grid. Like he was disqualified from qualifying P20 and then didn't pay it all race when everyone else's tires were just falling to pieces. And then he gets P10 by pitting in the last lap. Like unbelievable. <laughs> That's the thing, and he's not getting enough credit for it, in my opinion, because every other driver was complaining about tyre degradation. Yeah, graining. And graining, struggling. Alex Albon did not once complain. I reckon if it wasn't a rule, he would have just done the whole thing. He wouldn't have pitted. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he would have pitted. I, th- I think he would have I thought he was, seven. he was going to risk it all and just do it. I really, I, there was a point where I was like, he's going to just, he's just going to go. He's just going to see what happens. Yeah. Because I, I wanted to give him driver of the day. But I voted before, like when there was like two or three laps to go. And I was like, oh, like Williams, they've, you know, they're still not pitting him. What are they going to do? Are they just going to like, you know, see whatever punishment he gets for not pitting? Or are they going to pit him and he's going to come out and he's going to be outside the points? So because of that, I was like, oh, the Williams strategy, I think it might have backfired maybe. So I won't give him driver of the day. I mean, it all worked out perfectly. And I'm like, God damn it. It was, it was crazy. It was it was magnificent. You know what really gets me is the fact that, like you said, he went the whole race on that one set of tires, and I was like, okay, well, what if they don't pit? But then they did pit him, and then he still ended up in the points. And how like and they didn't show it he, on the screen. Oh, that that's the thing. They didn't show it on the screen. So I'm just concerned. I'm like, did did something else happen with the other cars, or how did he still end up in the points? I think no, it was no, kind of a, with... a close battle with um Zhou Guan Yu. But this is this is the thing. He pushed right on those last few laps before he pitted he was on 57 lap old tires yeah. and he was driving i think he said in the interview afterwards he was driving like every lap was a quality lap he was pushing so that he could build up that gap and he did and then in that one final lap he had a battle with joe as well to retain his place. i think i think the pit oh. stop wasn't even super fast like i think one of the one of the tires or something was wasn't coming off quickly so are you kidding me? Yeah. Again, we didn't see any just, of it. <laughs> we were just watching like Charles cross the line waving. I'm like, show us the actual action. <laughs> yeah, Alex but, is really underrated this whole race. I, I wish he got more more screen time. It's kind of sad. And when you think of it, like this is his third race for Williams and he's scored points. In this is his third race, race back in F1 after yeah. a year's break period. Like, yeah, that's true. That's, that's crazy. Solid day insane and just impressive so impressive what he did and it was completely overlooked in my opinion um mm, yeah but the yeah. actual driver of the day was quite good in fairness Charles Leclerc like he got the grand slam so pole fastest lap led every lap and came first I mean and there was nobody challenging him really and every single time he's like can I go for a fastest lap and they're like you all you have it fastest lap like what <laughs> like more a child, do you like want? please 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 I loved that. I that loved him. So he was like, can I go the fastest lap, please? Charles, you already have the fastest lap. Well, can, I, can I do it again? <laughs> I want to ride the roller coaster again. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't like literally at like, the last, what, second from last lap of the race, another car came and got the fastest lap. I can't remember who it was. And so, was it Alonso? No. It was, I, it was someone neat. Oh, actually, it was somebody who was outside of the top 10. Yeah, you're right. Because yeah. they were saying that whoever it was would steal it from Charles, but he, they wouldn't get the point. So maybe it was Alonso. I thought it might have been Kay Mag. No, no, uh, no way. Hmm, I don't know. I'm sure it was some. It was someone unexpected. Whoever it was, they got the fastest up, and then Charles did another did it again. <laughs> yeah. Yoink. He's like, nope, not today. <laughs> I bet they were like. Oh, uh, Charles, you know you wanted to go for that fastest lap again. Well, about that. Um, yeah, do it now. Do it now. Go. Do it. But yeah, props to Charles Leclerc. He's doing brilliantly. I feel he's... like he's just matured massively as a driver, even since last year. Like, he yeah, just I mean, looks so composed under pressure. Yeah, I mean, obviously the car's great, but he is just an incredibly talented driver, and he's finally been able to show it. Yeah. But I think he's just making less mistakes. Well, maybe that's the card too. They asked him in um, one of the interviews that, oh, a lot of people are saying that it's Charles Leclerc 2.0. And he's like, no, not really. Because you have to understand that as a driver and as an athlete, you progress. I guess he said, this is what he said, that 
it's been quite constant or like the, mm. the progression has been a gradual like a thing. linear yes yeah. a gradual thing so maybe we're seeing that progress being reflected more this year because the car is actually good right so yeah it's it's been more consistent more noticeable for the audience rather than just a, just an improvement that that is only visible to him because the car is bad or something but this year we're, we're, we're able to actually witness it so i guess mm. that's that's where his improvement comes from it's a combination Max is definitely uh, <laughs> very frustrated with how the race went. Like, I well, he should be. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's the only real driver. Not to play into the whole Sky being up there rivalry when it's not really a rivalry, um, because Sky they've only well they've only raced against each other like once, and that was in Jeddah. In both other races, he's DNF'd, so it's not a rivalry. Um, <laughs> but to be fair to them. Max seems to be the only driver that's really putting up a fight against Charles and yeah. he just keeps DNFing and I would be so frustrated if I was him because Max does have a chance. Well, I don't know if he does anymore, but he did have a chance of getting the championship again. But with that car, no way. Yeah, well, if they can if they can figure it out, like Christian Horner was saying, like, oh, it's I'd rather make a fast car reliable than a reliable car fast or something yeah christian you've already been through this a few times like let's go back to 2018 you had this issue back then too but you can really fix it so i think you need to change your outlook on that yeah i just yeah yeah. definitely i hope they sort it out soon because you don't want a driver to run away with this now again we're only like three races into a really long season so yeah things are going to change a lot especially with development and upgrades coming gradually over the year yeah, but Max didn't seem happy even in qualifying and stuff like the balance of the car or, and stuff like that. So it's uh, unusual to see him a bit kind of flustered. I want to talk about the current second place in the championship, George Russell. <laughs> Where did that come out of? Seriously? Well, it makes sense, I guess. But with the way that Merck is, I'm very surprised that he's currently second in the championship. But what I think everyone is more surprised of is that he keeps beating Hamilton. <laughs> Well, he's, yeah. he in the first race he didn't. Okay, but, um, I mean, like in the last it's clear race. that Hamilton's still the first. Well, yeah, it's clear that Hamilton's still the first driver, and yeah. he's being prioritised. But in every opportunity that George Russell gets, where Hamilton isn't being prioritised, like Quali, yeah, for example, he's it to him, yeah, he's really going for it. And again, yes, George got lucky with the pit stop in Australia, but he got that podium and he held mm-hmm. up Lewis. He, he I think he's really showing himself to be a very good driver. And I mean, you look at in Jeddah, I know we've already discussed Jeddah before, where Hamilton didn't get through to what Q2. Um, yeah. George does have the opportunity to outdo Hamilton. He, he's proved that. They're evenly matched, like, you know, a, a, you know, someone coming into the big constructor champion team you think oh this could be something where he you know the pressure gets to him or whatever but he's definitely stepped up um, well at the moment he's got more points yep i wonder what will happen if this continues to happen whether mercedes will swap leaders are they they going to i don't know i think i think they're very loyal to lewis and well this is the thing they are they are loyal to lewis but if we have another incident like Jeddah, where he goes out in q1 like are they going to make that call, I wonder? I don't know. They are very loyal to Lewis, it's true. But something is off with Lewis this year, and I don't think it's just the car. Well, his car did have problems in the race, I think. It was, like, overheating or something. So, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, but, like, I don't know how much of it is the car versus him versus, yeah, not having Bottas there as the kind of consistent porridge man that he knows will move aside <laughs> and help him out, so... There's a lot of uncertainties. Yeah. There's just and a I, lot I, of uncertainties with with this whole season altogether. Yeah. Like yeah. it's it's been a mixed bag of the results of, of everything from the first race, which as an audience I am enjoying, but also I'm like stressed. I'm like, what is this everything is so unpredictable. I think that there's still the potential for everything to completely shift. Yeah. Yeah. I I know that at the back of my head too because like we've we've seen it last season right we've we've seen that so 
Like, even Ferrari dominance. Bearing in mind, I'm still pretty sure at this point that Ferrari is going to continue to dominate. But, like, there's always that chance. With how unpredictable everything has been, I just... I don't know at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if Mercedes make a comeback. I wouldn't be surprised. And I don't know if I'm just saying this <clears throat> as a McLaren fan. No, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if McLaren make a decent comeback or they just continue to be bad. As a McLaren fan, I would just like to reiterate that I am hoping and praying to God that they please come back because otherwise it's just painful. Like this was the first race where I kind of felt good Last race was feeling great until Danny Diana. That was just a... Yeah, I just... I really need them to make a comeback. But it's just the way that Lando is speaking about the car in, like, press conferences and even in interviews. I know that kid doesn't hide any emotions. But I also know that that kid doesn't sandbag that well. So it's either he's spitting straight facts, and that means that McLaren is really struggling, or he is sandbagging so well that we're not believing it. Yeah, it's hard to know if he's he's playing it down just to lower expectations, just in case things don't go well. And then when they do, it'll be amazing. Or if they are kind of, yeah, really struggling. I mean, I was adamant that he was being completely honest because in the past, he's been so overly negative about his performance and often about McLaren's performance. Like he's very much pessimistic about things like that. So I just assumed he was being honest. And I still sort of think that, but with the interviews he did after Jeddah, where he basically was like, no, we're going to be awful in Australia. No, we're going to be awful in Imola. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they weren't, weren't awful, awful in Australia. They were average. They were good. And I know that it's because the track does suit them. Like, yeah. it seems it's that they're fast. having issues. Yeah, with the slow corners. With the slow corners. But, like, they were saying about Monza. He was like, no, we won't do well in Monza. But Monza doesn't uh. have... I mean, it's a fast track, right? So... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what, what, you know, he just seems to be saying... Moral moral of the story, I am just going to completely not believe Lando Norris. (laughs) Whatever he says goes in, boy who comes out the other. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, I I think think there's definitely an element of they're just saying, look, just downplay everything, okay? Yeah. 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 Keep expectations low. As a diehard McLaren fan, I I... I would like to talk about El Plan. (laughs) (laughs) That was such a seamless segue. Do you think Alonso could have gotten pole on Saturday? Yes. 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 Mm. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. If not pole, he would have been on the front front row at least. Row. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. That was an insane quality lap that he was doing until the car just said bye. (laughs) See ya. I mean, like, Alvin are looking good. I have to say. Well, this is. This is another thing, talking about teammates out performing each other. Nando was so much faster than Ocon. Yeah, but the whole the weekend. End, at the end of the weekend, Ocon got points and Fernando didn't, which is sick. I think it's just, him. yeah, it's just, yeah. Just, like, just I mean, the whole pit strategy just messed him around, I think. Yeah, his tires. He was doing bad. okay yeah. and then he pitted and then he just couldn't get back up there. But yeah, I mean, in quali anyway, he definitely could have got pole. A hundred percent. If not pole, then in the front row, and then if not front row, then almost definitely second row. He was going to be up there with that lap. It was insane. I think I saw the comparisons to the other fastest laps, and he was pretty much on par with them. So, oh, what yeah. could have been? Imagine. Oh my could god. Could have, should have, would have. Like that would have been. Yeah. No one expected an Alpine no. on the front row in Australia. Like no one, no one, no one thought that would happen. They were like, oh, okay, Ferrari or Red Bull or Merck or something like that. And then bam, Alonso and an Alpine there. I'm going to be controversial about this because Uh-oh. as I'm you a all know, fan? <laughs> no, <laughs> Sorry. well, I mean, I am, I am a McLaren fan, but as an Oscar Piastri fan. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, okay. Who, who um, technically was, you know, drafted to go to McLaren for so a replacement for Danny Rick. So yeah. Yes. It's all coming together. Therefore, as a McLaren uh, plan. McLaren, yeah. <laughs> as a McLaren, <laughs> McLaren plan. El McLaren. <laughs> there was a moment, I think, when Alonso crashed into the wall. And they just kind of zoomed in on Oscar Piastri's face. He's wearing a mask. He couldn't see it. But I was like, he's smiling, smiling. under that mask. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yes. My chance. That is his only chance, right? Because it's not going to be Ocon, I don't yeah. think. I don't think they... I heard an... Sorry. I heard an interview on uh, Any Driven Monday. Is that what it's called? The Sky Show on YouTube? Yeah. 
they were interviewing Oscar and they were just talking like, oh, you know, what are your plans for a seat for next year? And he was saying that that was the plan to get a seat and that Mark Webber is his manager and, you know, that he would be helping with discussions and all this kind of stuff. So it sounded like, because considering Fernando came out, you know, a week or like last race and was kind of like, oh, I think I'm going to be here for another two or three years. It kind of sounded like another team would be where he'd be going in the meantime. Aston Martin, maybe? No. Or No, I'm trying. I don't want to put, I don't want to. Look, I'm a sad fan as well, but I'm also being realistic. Like maybe Aston Martin or or might be Williams if they've been Latifi, which I ugh, I don't know. He's a good he's a good guy, but I don't know. If- I have an opinion on this. Audi are looking to buy an F1 team. Yeah, they are currently. Can I, can I stop you for one second? Every yeah. time, every time you say the name of that brand, I hear Aldi. I also hear Aldi, <laughs> and then I think of Gunther and Nick in their photo shoot. And I'm like, diner oh. shoot. Can you imagine like <laughs> Aldi having their sponsored room. by Aldi? Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. a bright like a bright like blue and yellow, yellow yeah, car. Yeah. I would actually dig that. Aldi, please buy an F1 team. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it would be a it would be a budget. It would be a budget F1 team, but I would be there for Aldi F1 team. <laughs> Drivers get okay. paid in groceries. <laughs> yeah. Aldi sorry. with a U. <laughs> Got it. Aldi the okay. car company Aldi. <laughs> okay, I'll get there. Hang on. Aldi are looking to buy an F1 team at the moment. And they are looking at McLaren. McLaren are pretty much standing their ground and saying no, uh, but Audi have upped the price to a ridiculous amount of money. I can't exactly remember how much, but it was a lot of money. <laughs> if McLaren do stand their ground, and I hope they do, then Audi are looking at other teams, and I know one of those is Williams. Now, Williams to me looks like the team that needs the money the most. So if that does happen, and Audi buy Williams, which I can see happening, I'm not saying it will, but I'm saying there's a potential there. In that scenario that they've got a different source of income do they then scrap off their current source of income mm-hmm. which is nicholas latifi's family mm-hmm. and then does that mean that they get rid of latifi and then is there a seat there for oscar piastri but you're also forgetting another i love latifi. latifi i love latifi by the way nicholas latifi's dad has heavily invested in mclaren as well oh I yeah he's he's a huge I don't know exactly what percentage, but I do know that he has heavily invested in McLaren. So I think he's going to get a say in the, in, at least a minimal say in the purchase of both the companies by Audi, if he has any say as a shareholder, because obviously he's got his foot in McLaren and his son in Williams, and he's pumping money into Williams as well as McLaren. So whatever happens with Audi, if it doesn't fall through with McLaren, there might be slim chances with Williams. What do you guys think about Haas? Because Haas is, like, they've lost Mazepin. They don't really have the money anymore. Do you think maybe Audi might go for Haas in that case? Because that's the Mm. bottom tier team. I mean, Haas currently have no main sponsor for obvious reasons. So 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 they would be looking for that. So Haas might actually sound like a better bet than Williams in that case. Because they are the ones that need the money the most. Let's put it that way. That's true. That is true. I don't think Williams is gonna. But Williams have said that they, yeah, that they don't need financing anymore. Yeah, so they've got that Duracell money, baby. Yeah, <laughs> Levanta money as well, <laughs> and the Levanta money, obviously. Um, so no, okay, but, yeah, it definitely sorry. puts a little bit of doubt over the security of Nicholas and TV's seat. Like, I really like him. He seems like a really, really nice guy, but he has not been advertising himself in the shop window very well lately Mm -hmm. and i hope for his sake that he can pull it together but you know when you compare him to alex who has just come in and just not had any crashes really i know he kind of collided a bit with stroll last time but yeah i don't know he uh i think his seat could be in danger do we want to move on to something beginning with s Smiley and Sunshine Danny. I will take the lead on this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you go, you go. You've got a half an hour slot. Yay. 
there were so many Sunshine Danny Rick like posters or what do you call those like cutouts? It's like they put his face on the Teletubbies' son and then just held it up the entire race. It was so heartwarming. The whole oh, amazing. Australian crowd, honestly, I thank them from the bottom of my heart as a Danny Rick fan. <laughs> <laughs> It was just, oh, it was lovely because man hasn't raced in Melbourne since 2019, which was a pretty atrocious race. We do not speak of that. I'm just happy that the crowd was so, so welcoming to him. And do you guys see that video of the, the guy on the train singing? Oh, yes, yeah, so good. Thank you, Oh, I want oh, Daniel Ricardo. <laughs> oh my God, I feel like. This is the this is um the equivalent of Supermax for Danny Rick. Yeah, <laughs> oh. it was very much a football chant, which I yeah. love. Yeah, it was so good. And was but, it also the biggest sporting event in Australian history, or am I making the that stat that's up? That's what I heard too. And then I was how wondering, is that possible? Yeah, but I then I was thinking were the Olympics were on there before. Yeah. so maybe I think it might have been the biggest sporting weekend in okay. Australia. I'm not sure, but something huge. I think it was like 420,000 people or something. It was big. Yeah. It was very big. And then when they yeah. at the at the end of the race when they let the fans get onto the onto the racetrack, holy crap. Oh my, oh my god, I could not see the track. I couldn't work out where the track was because it was just so many people. I was like where does the audience start and the track begin? Yeah, it <laughs> it's like when orange. a screen is super pixelated, you know, you see like little pixels. I was like, yeah. is my screen okay? And then I'm like, oh no, those are people. What a brilliant crowd though. I loved like the giant heads that they all had. Yeah. Like I loved it. I almost, honestly, this is convincing me to go to Australia, even though it's like at the other end of the world for me. The crowd. Wow. Oh, it looked like such a good atmosphere. That, that it did. looks like it a looked whole incredible. weekend long party. Amazing. It was crazy. And he had his whole family there. He had Isaac in his, like, merch. Oh, I swear to God, I almost cried. Because I didn't know that he did baby size, but obviously he made a one-off for his nephew. And seeing, like, little Isaac in a present momentum t-shirt with his dad and his mom and his uh, it's very sister wholesome. and his niece. Oh, it was it was adorable, man. It, it made you realize just how much he missed having his whole family at a race with him. And that, too, at his home race. Yeah, it went very well compared to the first two races, extremely well. Yeah. <laughs> Finish the race, check, got points, check. Yeah, that's, that's all we're looking for right now. The little things, we'll, we'll take what we can get. As a McLaren fan, I will take what I can get. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never letting this go. This is awesome. As a McLaren fan. Just start every sentence okay. with that. <laughs> As a McLaren fan, I've got an S as well. No, I was going to talk about the Aston Martin safety car, the best safety car, the most beautiful safety car. Which we did um, not see. The only Aston Martin to do well <laughs> in the race. Oh. Damn you. <laughs> but it's just, I was just so happy about seeing the Aston Martin safety car again. Um, and also, I just wanted to bring up that interview with George Russell, which really makes me laugh, where he got so defensive. Well, he, he wasn't he's... defensive. He was he was basically throwing the Aston Martin one under the bus and being like, the Merc but, is so much better. But he was so defensive of the um, Mercedes one. Like, yeah. as soon as... Um, but that's the thing. Like, I think it was Charles was saying, oh, the safety car was so slow. And then, and then George was like, well, actually, the Mercedes car was this many seconds faster than the Merc. But I'm like, yeah, but Charles said that the last one was slow as well. So chill, George. Yeah, also, the, the safety cars aren't in the constructor's... <laughs> it almost felt like george had a gun held to his head be like defend mercedes with your life like, it's like way. every time every time that george mentions something positive about mercedes he gets like a pay rise yeah <laughs> like how you say as a mclaren cringy. fan every time i say as a mclaren fan like zach brown just comes into my room and just pops like a coin into my pocket a piggy bank yeah, I've got like a little McLaren papaya piggy bank. Every time I say as a McLaren fan, he just sort of sneaks into my room with a little pound coin and just plunk. There he is now, actually, because I just said it. Hi, Zach. Yeah, just, just over there, mate. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> See you soon. That's my, that's my S. Although it should have been Scooter Seb. I will yes, but it's talk about that. Scooter Seb was <laughs> both the most amazing part of the weekend and then the most soul-destroying part of the weekend. Like, what the hell was going on? First of all, he was 
asking the marshals, well, this is after his car went kaput in FP1. He was saying to the marshals, oh, do I have a way to get back to the garages? And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, your, your lift is coming. Just hang on. And he was like, oh, can I drive? And they were like, yeah, sure. But he said in interviews later on, he was expecting the marshal to get on behind him, but then he didn't. So he was like, meh, I'm just going to go. So yeah, then he just did his lap of honor just around with his helmet perched on his head. No hands. It was the most bizarre thing ever. It was so strange. Like with his helmet just sort of perched on the top of his head, like a mushroom. Yeah, and everyone was <laughs> like, waving and cheering like, yay. <laughs> he really let his impulsive thoughts take over. And I respect that. But then the whole like fine 5,000 euro I was like oh man that's an expensive Uber Eats pizza <laughs> <laughs> I mean uh, at least he got like he needed lap time so you know oh take my. the scooter it probably would have been it probably would have been faster on that scooter than in the actual Aston Martin oh yeah, god he was asked in an interview as well the I think it was Sky Germany they were like why didn't you put your helmet on properly and whatever and he was like oh I, I, I would be going faster on my push bike. <laughs> so he was like, I didn't really feel, feel like I needed it. So yeah, not a great day. And then the next day he crashed again and was back on the back of the scooter again. So <laughs> yeah, he didn't steal that one. That Thankfully. Yeah. The crowd was going wild when he was riding into the pit lane on his little um, on his little scooter. I love how the crowd (laughs) crowd just went for it, and that's how I know that the Australian people or the the Australian crowd is just insane because they will they will cheer onto the wildest things. Seeing a four time world champ on a scooter riding into the pit lane, like or 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 cheering when a when a marshal falls over. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) but apparently they cheered when he got back up as well. So that was you know that's good. S could be oh, I loved that guy. on the grass. <laughs> I loved that guy. I loved that guy. The, the marshal that fell over, absolute highlight for me. <laughs> oh, no. oh, it was just so funny because I can't remember what the Sky commentary said because I haven't seen that, but I've seen the clip with the, I think it's the F1 TV commentary. Um, but they're saying, oh, I hope he doesn't fall over. Yeah, and then he falls over. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it's like they predicted it they could see it coming there's been some really good martial content so far we've had that one martial whose trousers fell down <laughs> from a couple oh, weeks ago no. and then now we've had the martial falling over I, I love these guys so much they need their own championship <laughs> the martial olympics yeah. <laughs> that sounds good actually wasn't there a little bit of Martial Olympics going on in Spa last year when they yeah, were when they were playing ball? like yeah. rules or something? That was yeah. so cute. I'm like, oh, they're bored, so they just start playing on the side of the track, and it's just hissing <laughs> rain on them. I was like, oh man, let them have their fun. Oh, yeah. And when they started doing fake pit stops, it was the Marshals doing fake pit stops for the <laughs> audience, isn't it? They like road cars. <laughs> It was so funny. Oh, I love Marshalls. I don't get enough positivity. Credit. I hope, Praise. Christian, I hope Christian Horner is listening on to this part, seeing as his yeah. views on Mar- Marshalls can be. Hmm. Oh, yeah. About their flag waving ability. Mm-hmm. Another S I have to mention is um, the shoey that Ted did in the crowd <laughs> from a random He's stranger. He's viral oh. on social media. He's yeah. gone viral. I, he's probably so got a happy. viral infection after that but... <laughs> <laughs> poor guy and the guy who gave him his shoe was wearing like a celtic football yeah, jersey yeah, like yeah, what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bizarre I mean, oh that honestly, was so funny kudos to uh, Ted for taking a random person's shoes and yeah. drinking out of it like embracing it <laughs> but this is why I love Ted this is why I love Ted because Ted he has no filter like if his brain is like do this he just does it <laughs> He just he's like he's like, do you know what I should do? This and then he does it. He doesn't question it. He's like, I'm gonna do a shoey. I'm gonna use a baby bell to like, like <laughs> even cheese. Like even when he's like using cheese and it's not working, he doubles down on it because he's like, I've made this decision, I'm gonna do it. And that is why I respect Ted. He just does stuff. <laughs> He doesn't ever he doesn't <laughs> censor himself, he doesn't filter himself. He just walks around and he's like oh, I'm going to do this now. And then he I, does it. And that's why I love him. I think he would have a great travel show. Like, oh, Ted does yeah. stuff. I would watch any... I would literally... If Ted just did a podcast where he just talked about his day, I would lap that up. <laughs> oh, my God. Ted, please. 
just I love his Instagram, which I didn't find until recently, where he just posts like arty pictures. Ted, I love you. You're amazing. Please make more content. Just for I him. hope he yeah, I hope he listens to this podcast because we've got <laughs> sure three different Ted fans. <laughs> Ted Kravitz, if you listen to this podcast, please just make more content. My my fa- one of my favorite things about when you're watching a Grand Prix is when like they're talking to Ted in the pit lane and he's just like going off about like what he's had for breakfast. <laughs> then like Crofty basically has to be like two sex Ted is <laughs> a radio message and poor Ted's like, I didn't okay, get to no. talk about my muesli. <laughs> <laughs> when he was doing the notebook after the race, he was just talking away and then there was a guy walking through the paddock and he was, uh, I think he was a doctor or something and he was like, are, are, you, are you a doctor? And then he just started asking him questions. He was like, I just drank out of a random man's shoe, you know, <laughs> will I be okay? And your man was like, oh, I think like, you know, you could get athlete's foot in your stomach or something. I don't know if he was joking or whatever. He was like, he was like, is that serious? Should I take something? Like this is in the middle of the live broadcast. And uh, the doctor's like, ah, Danny Rick has survived. You know, you'll be fine. So, so bizarre. (sighs) Like, I don't have ESPN. I watch Formula One on the F1 TV app. So I don't get to see any of these, like, but is he not notebooks. on is he not on f1 tv no we don't just get it live. Uh, yeah i don't i don't get it i don't damn. have access to that so i'm just like missing out on all of this ted content so i have to like scour the interwebs to like <laughs> some pe- some fans youtube channel and they're posting like a really shoddy like shaky screen recording of ted talking TV. about <laughs> oh my is God, it time is it time for me to talk directly to sky again yes. sky oh God, sky go. sky <laughs> Sky, Sky, please share Ted with the world. Stop region locking your Ted videos, firstly, and just share Ted with the world because the world deserves to see more Ted Kravitz, is what I'm saying. I need Ted. I need cheese and I need chewies. In that order. My other highlight was in the Ted Quali notebook, which I believe was like live, like live TV, when yeah. he, he just started talking to the Australian fans like it was just a normal conversation, which is risky on live TV, yeah. I would say. <laughs> He just like talking back and forth like he wasn't on TV. It was just like, so how's your day? <laughs> what are you doing then? <laughs> Any plans for having... Yeah, literally. <laughs> it's like the most like mundane conversation. I was like, you should know you're on TV, right? Oh, I love Ted. What a legend. I love how the fans also went Ooh, what a legend. With it. Like they just went along with it. They were just answering his questions. Like, yeah, totally hear about my day. Yeah, we were like fine with it. They were like, it's Ted. We all love Ted. Everyone loves Ted. Except for me, because I don't have access to it. <laughs> I just want to, I want to share Ted with the world. He just always cheers me up. I have watched the YouTube video, which is the highlights of 2021. I think it was 2021. So many times I can I basically so quote it. So good. is <laughs> like, nothing says the glamour of Monaco like a sack of unused spuds. And oat milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great line. And when he gets to an argument with Seb about cheese. Yeah. Oh, man. You shouldn't oh, be it's... proud of that, Ted. <laughs> it's a waste. <laughs> he just doubles down. He's like, no, no, it's good cheese. It's a triangle. <laughs> He's like, it's a triangle. I can use it to demonstrate. And Seb's like, just use paper. No, yeah. cheese. <laughs> oh, so good. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Uh, Be sure to check out some of our previous episodes if you haven't already. And subscribe to us on Spotify and YouTube so you can be kept up to date with our new episodes when they come out. Check us out on Instagram where we post some amazing Driver of the Week posts. And check us out on TikTok where a lot of us, including me, make some absolutely spectacular content. Humble brag. (laughs) Humble brag. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Bye. 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 There you go, that'll do. As a McLaren fan. As a McLaren McLaren fan. fan. (laughs) Goodbye. Goodbye from McLaren fans. (laughs)